Welcome to World Mission Topics, Lesson 7, for our third week of July, 2022. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is Interceding for the People. Our lesson text is coming out of Acts chapter 9, verses 31 to 43. The memory verse says, But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And that's Acts chapter 9, verse 40. The key terms for today's lesson. Intercession, narcissism, and paralytic. Intercession, the act of intervening, interposition between parties at variance, with a view to reconciliation, prayer or solicitation to one party in favor of another. Narcissism, excessive interest in or admiration of oneself. Paralytic, a person who has lost the ability to move in part or most of the body, typically as a result of illness, poison, or injury. Our lesson text, Acts chapter 9, verses 31 to 43. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints, which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him, and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made, while she was with him. But Peter put them all forth, and kneeled down, and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with Simon a Tanner. Suggested Emphasis In the lesson text, the spotlight turns to the Apostle Peter and his ministry throughout the region. The narration indicates this was a period of peace for the early church. Perhaps the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, a well-known enemy of the faith, had temporarily undermined the anti-Christian movement. Whatever the reason for the respite, it allowed the leadership in Jerusalem to visit with the new communities of believers in Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. 
The impression we have of these local faith communities is that they were reverent, spirit-led, and growing. Of course, the apostles wanted to further strengthen and encourage these local bodies. Emphasis 1. Aeneas is freed from paralysis. Peter initially headed west to Lydda, a town that was like a suburb of Jerusalem, only being a day's journey away. While visiting there with the saints, Peter met a certain man named Aeneas. This wording may be meant to imply the man was not yet a believer, but given his Greek name, we might assume he was a Hellenist Jew. The man was a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Peter addressed him as if he was introducing him to the Savior. Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. In this way, the apostle declared that the man would no longer be in the care of others. This miracle of deliverance is strikingly similar to Christ healing the paralytic man at Peter's house, found in Mark chapter 2, verse 11, and the sick man beside the pool of Bethesda, found in John chapter 5, verse 8. Those two invalids had also been dependent on the kindness of others and received independence along with their healing. This intercession by Peter became a spark of further evangelism. Presumably, Aeneas came to faith, but the record also says that people who saw him whole again turned to the Lord. Emphasis 2. Tabitha is raised from the dead. In the nearby port city of Joppa, it was noised about that Peter was in Lydda. The Christians in Joppa had just suffered the loss of a wonderful saint named Tabitha. She had a reputation for deeds of kindness and charity. The widows for whom she had sewn tunics and other garments were among her mourners. A delegation from Joppa traveled to Lydda to find the apostle and bring him back with them. The situation begs the question, of what they wanted him to do. Were they desirous of comfort and encouragement in their time of bereavement? Were they hoping for something more? Their intent is not explained in the text, but we do see how Peter responded. Again, perhaps recalling a similar situation when Jesus raised Jairus' daughter and that's found in Mark chapter 5, verse 41. Peter cleared the room of the mourners and knelt down to pray. He spoke to the young woman, calling her spirit back into her body. He was able to present her alive to the congregation. And of course, the resurrection sparked even more evangelistic furor. Emphasis 3. Intercessory Prayer in the Modern Church The former president of the Southern Baptist Convention's Executive Committee, Dr. Ronnie Floyd, made a rather discouraging observation about intercessory prayer in the modern church. He wrote that due to the me-driven cultural Christianity that is commonly found today, Christians do not hear a great deal about intercessory prayer. In fact, in most churches, the term and the practice have been placed on the shelf. Other cultural critics have voiced similar concerns about the growing narcissism of the church going public. It may be a byproduct of unhealthy tangents, organized churches have taken in recent years, like promoting the prosperity gospel and adopting seeker-sensitive gimmicks. Thankfully, we still have the pattern left by the early church, and we should follow their example. 
Intercession should be a priority for us like it was for Peter. We are never more Christ-like than when we are laboring in prayer for the benefit of our family, friends, and neighbors. Moreover, when those prayers are answered, it enhances the impact and spread of the gospel. We should consistently pray for others and pray that God does miraculous things in their lives. Mission application questions. Question one, how did Peter's actions in Lydda and Joppa resemble what he had seen Christ do? Question two, what is the significance of intercession for people outside of the church, like Aeneas? Question three, how committed are you personally to intercessory prayer? Do you tell people you are praying for them? World Missions Prayer Points Let us pray to intercede on behalf of others without seeking fanfare or accolades. Let us pray to follow the example Jesus left us of interceding for others. Let us pray that we remain sensitive and observant of the needs of others. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.